the last time I was here, if you were filming from this exact location, I'd be six foot down in a trench. And that's what they were doing a year ago when we were filming here. The trench was here, nothing else was around. And since then, they've got the cable, which comes from somewhere over there, believe it or not, right the way through here. It's not only been filled in, it's actually totally overgrown and it's natural now. So hi, I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. We're here at Birch Services on the M62 and we're eastbound, heading towards Hull. So when I arrived first time, none of this was here. There's a substation right out the back and that one feeds to, through to that a smaller substation that was there. But that substation was not man enough, didn't have enough power to be able to run the charges that they were going to be installing. So the problem here all the way through has been the national grid DNO distribution network operation is, is trying to get the power through to here. So the power comes through now to a new substation, which is there, and that comes straight in off the grid. That goes through to a transformer, which is now nicely boxed in there, but the video will show it without the boxing in long time ago, uh, and that drops the voltage down. And then the cable comes around this way and comes down to the cabinets, which are here. So there's a tremendous amount of work has been done to get this there. In anticipation of all the work being done, they put the superchargers themselves in, the chargers, uh, over a year ago. So the cabling from here under the road, which goes through here, uh, into the car park has been there for about 18 months. And the chargers themselves are all the V3s. Well, of course, we know uh, they've been here a long time because they don't install V3s anymore. Everything is V4s. So those V3s were put in over a year ago and they've been taped up, polythened up, and they've been sitting there. And every time we come to film here, people have been pulling in, oh, it's not open yet and off on their way again. Uh, so when, uh, when this wasn't open, the only chargers on this uh, eastbound carriageway of the M62, the Transpennine motorway, are two grid serve, dual bay, 40 kilowatt chargers. And this was an absolute joke. So this has been uh, very much needed for an awful long time. So it's interesting to see the stages that it goes through. Uh, so the delay here has been a lot of legal stuff as well, whereby uh, they need permission to come across land because the substation here wasn't man enough and the cabling wasn't man enough. So everything has been upgraded. So coming from here, we're going to have to be careful. There's a huge amount of traffic. Uh, so we're going to be very safety conscious here. But this was all a big trench uh, and it came down. This is the communications box. So in here you have modems, uh, telecommunications, BT, open reach, everything in there. So that when you plug in your car uh, will allow uh, Tesla to be able to take a payment from your account. It knows what it is, uh, but it also will monitor the, um, the uh, activity in the superchargers, how many are vacant, how many are being used, any that are out of order. So that's all the communication, but main thing of course is payment. Uh, these are the cabinets that will drop each of the uh, voltages down. They come in at 470 or 480 for Tesla. I know people will tell me all three phases, 415. No, it isn't. Inside that transformer, when they had it open, I was able to look at it and it's switchable inside from 400 up to 485. And Tesla set their voltage higher than people like GridServe who are over the other side of the car park. These uh, voltage come through to here, 480 volts. There's three cabinets here. Each of the cabinets will provide enough power to, to power four of the Tesla chargers um, and being V3s, those are 250 kilowatts each. So each of these is capable of putting out a kilowatt if all of them are full, all the cars arrive absolutely empty, preconditioned, Tesla's everything ready to go and they all start pulling 250 kilowatts. These are quite capable of doing it. 
Interesting thing I learn about Tesla when you talk to the engineers who are doing it, these can share power between them. So if uh, four people pull into the first four chargers and they're all pulling 250 kilowatts, the second cabinet can actually supply power through to it so nobody ever runs short. Uh, it very rarely happens like this. That's what they call the worst case scenario because uh, normally cars tend to be, you don't park, it's like when you go and have a pee, you never stand next to the guy next to you. Here, you don't tend to park next to someone who's a robot. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, Tesla. <laughs> uh, so like here, normally when you're charging, you don't ch uh, pull in right next door to, uh, uh, to another one charging. Uh, but being the V3s, it doesn't matter because they all have dedicated power, 250 kilowatts each one. So this has all been filled in. It's overgrown nicely. It's, well, it's difficult to walk on, but uh, uh, it's, it's a natural uh, habitat now. And uh, I think it's uh, really just an excuse not to have the garden here. Anyway, uh, so we're going to have a look over. So I've just got to make my way carefully. Now we're always very wary of uh, cars. This is a very busy motorway services and we try and keep well off the road, particularly when we're filming because uh, we have to do two things at once and then we're not that good at dual dual tasking. Anyway, uh, these are the cabinets. So we've got three cabinets. Each of these is quite capable of a thousand watts. Uh, on this one, there's a label on the end, as, as all of them are. And just to read them is quite interesting. Uh, it's IP66, and that simply means that these are totally weatherproof. They can stand anything. Uh, voltage input nominal, it is 380, 400, 415, 440, 480, three phase. And that's what I was saying about Tesla superchargers. They like to get the transformer to supply not 415, but 480. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the voltage range is 360 to 528, so there's quite a wide spread. Um, and the output of it, maximum power, five, uh, input power 575, maximum voltage range 800 to 1000 volts. Um, and then the output power 250 kilowatts, uh, output range 0 to 500 volts. Uh, so those will never be able to charge a, uh, a, a Ionic 5, which is an 800 volt architecture. These are all rated at 400, uh, 400 volts, but each of those is 250 um, kilowatts power. Uh, so that means that we've got uh, plenty of power in each of these cabinets to power four of the chargers, uh, the V3 chargers over there. And as I said before, they share power between them so they can shift. There's a common bus, they call it, uh, a voltage bus between them, and they can shift power between cabinets. So it means if everyone piles into one or two cabinets, um, or one or two cabinets worth, in other words, if eight chargers get filled up and everyone's charging at maximum rate, the third one, which is not uh, charging anything, can share power between it. So that's where we are. So we're just going to walk over and have a look at the chargers themselves. Okay, so long, long time ago, well over a year ago, the cable from the cabinets underground comes under the road, under this bit of the car park, and it comes through to the chargers. So these were put in over a year ago. We know that because they don't fit the V3s anymore. Long since gone over to the V4s. So these have been here for about 18 months. Now, for all of you who will notice, number of really important things that we point out. The first one is this really short cable. And I came across someone in Oxford, a young lady who was given a, a Model X for a company car. Whoa, I'd love to work for that company. Um, and uh, she found out that you have to get really close with these. And because it was a brand new car, she hadn't driven it before, uh, she was wary about pulling too close. These are really quite short cables and that allows them to make really thin cables. It makes them really thin, flexible, lightweight. You don't have the big overhead cable uh, tensioners that uh, you see on other ones, particularly uh, the Swarco ones. Uh, where the cables themselves and the plugs are absolutely massive. These are very lightweight, very lightweight plugs, uh, very lightweight cables. And most interesting for us Teslas, we have a button on there and that button releases our charging port flap. So we don't need an app. When a Tesla pulls into one of these, we get this, we press that button, the flap pops open and the flap is always in the rear right-hand corner. So you reverse in 
always reverse into a Tesla charger. You press that, the flap pop, pops open, and this plugs in, and that's it. You'll notice on here, there's no contactless payment terminal. There's no screen, there's no buttons, there's absolutely nothing. The only thing this has is a cable and a plug. And that was designed from Tesla right in the early days to make it as simple as possible to charge your car when you're out on a road trip or on a long journey. So literally, you reverse in, you walk around, pick this out, press a button, flap pops open, plug it in, walk away. Now the computer on the car will talk to the computer uh, at the communication center and that will talk to the Tesla mainframe computer. I'm just going to put that back. And they have a very quick communication. It's about two seconds. It's frighteningly fast. And then the computer at Tesla says to the charger, yes, you're okay to charge this car. We know whose it is. We know how he's going to pay. We've got a car detail on record, or we've got Apple Pay or whatever method we've chosen. And it instantly starts charging, usually two or three seconds. It's very, very fast. So the char car then will charge. We can walk away and we head over for the services. And what happens then as we walk away, the car locks. And when the car locks, it not only locks the door, it locks the charger plug into the socket. So nobody can come along and pull that socket, uh, that plug out and stop your charging session. I see on um, some of the YouTube channels, they've got new devices now that you can actually lock the plug into the... Wow, just get a Tesla. It locks automatically when you walk away. You can't take it out. Okay, so the power comes through to here and we're finally open. They're turned on, they're ready to go. And of course, this is a very busy route. And of course, the day we're filming, there's not a single Tesla charging at this moment in time. Anyway, uh, while we've been filming, we've been here about half an hour. Uh, they've been coming and going on quite a regular basis. But let me just set the scene for the location. This is the M62. It goes from Liverpool in the west right the way across the Pennines over to Hull in the east, going past Leeds, Manchester, Leeds and uh, York. Uh, so very, very busy route, uh, very big commercial route for the lorries. Uh, this is the main route between east and west. Uh, so this is a really popular location. Until these opened and until the new grid serve opened, the only charges that were here were two grid serve electric highway, 40 kilowatt, dual bay, shared power. Oh, how anyone coped in those days, we don't know. Uh, so this has always been a key location. It's been much in demand. And when we monitor the usage of these, this is a busy charger. We just happen to have picked a quiet time. Uh, but while we've been here, we've seen about five or six Teslas coming and going. And that's one of the things about Teslas is they do charge very quickly. But this is a really key location. We can also tell that from the fact that grid server putting 12 uh, and it was originally going to be a 350 kilowatt charges. They might switch it to six of the dual bay 360 kilowatt charges. Uh, but this is what's needed on all the motorway services. And just like petrol stations, uh, somewhere over the back, um, you know if you go into a motorway services, you can always pull into a petrol station and there will always be enough petrol pumps there uh, that even if there is a queue, it's not going to be very long. And that's what we've not had for EVs on motorway services. There are still today motorway services where all you've got is 240 kilowatt uh, dual bay chargers. And that for a motorway services is absolutely appalling. Uh, it is getting much better. Uh, and it's, a lot of it is driven by, this is a Moto Services, is driven by the actual company Moto actually demanding or asking or begging for the CPOs, the charge point operators like Tesla and GridServe, to come in and install here. And if it fits in with their plans and they see enough demand uh, for it, they will work with the, uh, with the charger. And we know in, in other locations, Moto is very, very big. Rugby Services, that's a Moto. And that one now, there's going to be 36 uh, grid serves and 28, no, 32 Teslas. Massive, massive installation, uh, big hub. 
Same with Exeter. Exeter, there's 32 uh, Tesla V3s, and there's, uh, last time I was there, there was 18 of the GridServe 350s, but I believe there's another 12 going in as well. These are big hubs, and that's what's needed. Whichever motorway services you go into in an EV, you should be able to find more chargers available than being used you should always be able to find a spot. If you can get up to that stage, it means on any journey, you can pull into any motorway services and there will be a charger there waiting for you, empty, vacant, uh, for you to use. Now, we can't guarantee it's gonna be a decent price because some of the uh, CPOs are still charging silly money. Uh, like here, GridServe will be, it's currently 10% discount till the end of the month, uh, but it's normally 79p. The Tesla's here, uh, around about 40 odd p for a Tesla driver. So huge difference in price. So we can't guarantee that every motorway services will have cheap ultra rapid charging. But what we need to do first is to get to a point where every motorway services has more chargers than they need. That's an interesting one coming in behind. Just film that. Oh, it's a convoy of them. That looks like a motorway bridge. Yeah. What's the last one? Oh, that's not, that's not really, no, it's the uh, tail end of the uh, wide vehicle. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm about done on that. Do you, do you need any more? 